complex fraction. The reason why it's called a complex fraction is basically we have a fraction in the numerator and we have a fraction in the denominator. The first thing you guys want to do for this whole focus lesson is simplify by factoring. Up here, I notice I have a square term minus another square term. So I can simplify that using uh, the difference of two squares. So I'm going to factor that into x minus 3 times x plus 3. Over here, I can factor out a 6. So when I factor out a 6, I'm left with a x minus 2. In the denominator here, I need to determine what two numbers multiply to give me 21 and then add to give me 10. So I can factor that into x plus 7 times x plus 3. And then over here, I need to figure out what two numbers multiply to give me negative 2, add to give me negative 1. So that would be x minus 2, x plus 1. OK. So now, there's a couple different ways we can um, do this. All right? And I think the basic thing when dealing with a complex fraction is when you guys actually look like a fraction like this, basically what this is is um, division over division, right? Dividing, or you're basically taking a fraction divided by another fraction, right? So basically what I can do is just multiply by the reciprocal of my divisor. So basically I can rewrite this as x minus 3 times x plus 3 all over 6 times x minus 2, and then multiply it by the reciprocal. Because whenever you have a fraction in the denominator, if you multiply by that reciprocal, that's how you get rid of it. Those divide out. Those divide out. What did I, what did I not write? Oh, I didn't write it correctly. Those divide out, and those divide out. Right? Using our division property, if you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, the division property makes everything 1 in the denominator. Does everybody see that? But whatever you do in the denominator, you have to do in the numerator to make sure that they are equivalent fractions. So I'd have to multiply my numerator times x plus 1, x minus 2, over x plus 7 times x plus 3. And that's what that would look like over here. x plus 1 times x minus 2 divided by x plus 7 times x plus 3. Now I can use the division property. And remember, the division property works only across multiplication. Well, you guys can see that I am multiplying each of these, qu each of these quantities are separated by multiplication, right? So I can use the division property. I can use the division property across multiplication. Inside the parentheses, there's adding and subtracting, but that's fine. So here you can see that x minus two and x minus two by use of the division property goes to one, and then I have an x plus three and an x plus three by division property goes to one. Since I'll be nice to you guys, we will leave this in our uh, um, factored form. However, if you have a uh, test and it's asking you for it to be expanded or the answers of a multiple choice test are expanded, please note that you'd have to expand that into x squared minus 2x minus 3 over 6x plus 42. Right? But I like this form. Why would I like this form? Does anybody have a random idea why I would like this form? It's going to be something we're going to talk about. Yeah? Because if you're going to put it in other equations, it makes it easier to cancel. Well, it would be easier to cancel it out. And I, I just like the simplified form. There's also something that starts with a D and rhymes with Romain. Domain. domain. It's really easy to figure out what the domain would of this one be, right? This one, the domain, we know that x cannot equal 7, right? So it would be negative infinity to um, 7. What's also nice, but what's nice about this one is now we can also, or it's also easy to figure out what the asymptote is. x equals negative 7 is the vertical asymptote. It's also good, but this form is nice to look at the horizontal asymptote. Because remember on your test, the horizontal asymptote, you have to compare the degrees. right? Here, it's not so obvious what the degrees are. But when you expand it, you can see that the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator. 
Therefore, no horizontal asymptotes exists. But you guys don't need to do all that. I just figured I'd ad lib a little bit. <laughs>